We continue our missing series tonight with the disappearance of a woman named Megan Marone. She is a school teacher from New York, and she went missing on a hike in a relatively small wooded park in western Massachusetts. And Megan has not been seen since. For more than a week, search crews have been combing the area looking for the 42 year old, but so far they have had no luck in finding her. Correspondent Marky Martin is joining us live tonight with a closer look at her disappearance and what we know at this point. Good evening, Marky. Good evening, Marnie. You know, the bucolic Berkshires region of western Massachusetts has really become known as this relaxing vacation spot, probably best known for its scenery, its outdoor activities. Well, at the very end of March, uh, Marone, who's from the Albany area, teacher, went to escape for a quick getaway, escaping Monday through Friday classroom life. She got there, checked into a hotel, apparently went on a hike, and hasn't been seen or heard from since. And tonight, questions are mounting about what really happened. I haven't lost hope. Peter Naples says it's not unusual for his sister, 42-year-old Megan Marone, to go on short getaways by herself. Her love of hiking and the outdoors, drawing her to the Berkshires for the last weekend in March. I texted with her Saturday night when she was staying at the hotel here here in Stockbridge. She was having a bowl of soup and reading her book, and I, I said I'd speak with her tomorrow. And that was the last I heard from her. When her family didn't hear from Marone for several days, they got worried and called police. They found her car at Long Coke Park. It's a small park, about 46 acres, and it does have hiking trails. Police believe Marone parked and went for a hike on Sunday, March 27th. For more than a week, searchers have come to the area, even using dogs, drones, and helicopters. They say there was no sign of foul play in her car, and they were able to track her cell activity for a short time before the signal went dead. Based on the last ping from her phone, they have now shifted the search efforts to a private wooded area about three quarters of a mile west of the park. Some areas of the train we're searching are extremely difficult, uh, very, very thick, and that's kind of hampered search efforts. Authorities have not released the name of the hotel where Marone was staying, but say they have confirmed she was traveling alone. Her brother has set up a website, findmeganmarone.com, seeking information in the case. And the family is offering a $50,000 reward for her safe return. Tonight, friends are refusing to give up hope. It's just totally traumatic. Um, and she is a beautiful person who makes our world better. The school telling us today that Marone is a 10th grade English teacher. She is beloved, so of course this has been an extremely stressful time on her campus as well. Those students, uh, the staff there, we know the superintendent sent out a campus-wide email just making sure everybody knew that continued help, resources, and support would be made available to those who need it. We've also been told by authorities anybody with more information is asked to call Lee Police, Bethlehem Police, or 911. Marnie. Important to get that story out there tonight. Marky, thank you. I want to bring in now Megan's brother, Peter Naple. Uh, he is joining us live tonight to talk about the ongoing search for his sister. Uh, Peter, thank you. I know this is difficult. Really appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Uh, I do understand you've been out there helping in the search of a two mile area or so. Has anything stood out to you? Any clues that you've come across? Uh, one thing about this case is that nothing has stood out so far. Um, we've I've had volunteers in there. I know the effort and and resources used by uh, Massachusetts State Police, Lee Police, uh, Berkshire uh, Search and Rescue to comb the area so far. And so far, absolutely nothing has come up. The terrain, I understand, is pretty rough. There's some deep ravines out there. It's difficult to get around. Is there a chance that your sister could have fallen? Is that one of the theories? It's possible. Um, I, for where we are looking right now, I'm not quite sure how she would have even ventured there in the first place. But the fact that we have people still looking, that that's a comfort.
Mm -hmm. um, tell me more about that last ping of the cell phone. It happened about 3 p.m. on Sunday, March 27th. It was west of the park. I think what, what I understood is it was um, in an area where there weren't any trails. What does that make you think? It, it just leaves more questions than answers. Um, the, the trail where her car was found was directly in front of her. The area that's being looked at right now is three quarters of a mile in the opposite direction. Why she went there or why her phone pinged there, I'm not too sure. How closely are you and other family and friends communicating with police at this point in the search? Have they uh, been able to give you any hope in, in what they're doing? They are, they are doing their very best and they have they have been in communication with me every day. Um, I'm just going to say as a brother and um, one of my best friends, I'm going to do everything I can to do to find my sister hopefully alive. Mm -hmm. Anything more you can share about people you spoke with at the, ho the hotel, the motel where she was staying? N not not a lot. Um, they they said that when she ventured out on Sunday that she was in good spirits. Um, it was a brief conversation. They mentioned that she asked where the place was that she was looking for and that she was feeling good. That's that is what we heard today, as a matter of fact. And Megan was accustomed to the outdoors. She loved being outside. I know that she loved being on trails, um, even going out on her own from time to time to do what she was doing, uh, to feel like she was part of nature. Um, what else do you want to share with us about your sister, who she is, what you miss right now? Uh, this is the toughest part of this. Um, we are talking about one of my best friends, we're talking about someone that has touched a not, I'm countless uh, students. And I plan on, there's already testimonial on my website, www.findmegamarone.com. Um, there's, there's tons of testimony. I, I've, I've done many I've done many uh, class trips with her class down in New Jersey, and they they all come back saying she's changed our life. What makes her so special? <laughs> her outlook, her her view of how this world is, without a doubt. Peter, we go to the ends of the earth to find and protect the people we love. I know you're doing that now. I appreciate your time. Uh, we'll stay in touch, and I hope for good news for you and your family soon. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you very much. And if you have any information on the disappearance of Megan Marone, contact the Lee Police Department. We've got that number on your screen. And we do want to point out that in the last seven months, we have made it our mission to cover these very cases, missing cases every single week, people impacted just like Peter and his family. We've told you about dozens of missing people and their families, hoping to bring them home safely. We need your help to do this, to bring these cases to light. If you or someone you know has a case that you'd like to pass along to us, send us your tips. You can go to our website at newsnationnow.com slash missing. We've got a team that looks into cases each week and we select cases and we work with the families and police to try to find some answers. So we'd love to have you partner with us as we continue this effort. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.